What's new, what's new? Welcome back to another music interview. I'm Justin the Floor God, and this is the So Who's Up Next podcast, the show where I have curious conversations with my fellow artists about their music, process, and creativity. Kibun started as a lo-fi producer, but has recently expanded his musical palette to include more nostalgic and atmospheric sound design. His latest album, Childhood Memories, fully encompasses this new sound. Let's get into it. King Joey, where are you from? What's up, man? So I'm um, from California, from the city of Compton. Kind of famous. I like they made that movie with Jay-Z, Ice Cube, and all the rappers. Yeah, and how long have you been making music? I started making music four years ago, just messing around on my computer, you know? I bought this audio interface, which is basically kind of like something that allows your mic to go into the like, USB drive. So I bought that. It's a Focusrite Scarlett. I bought that, and, and it came with a demo version of Ableton Live. Mm. That's what I used to make all my music and stuff. I didn't start releasing music until like two years ago on my SoundCloud. Gotcha. And so what do you think finally changed and convinced you to start releasing music? I feel like it was just one day where I was like, you know what, screw it. You know, I'm just making this music. Might as well just put it out there. You know, who knows? Maybe someone will like it. Yeah. And now you have four albums out, a bunch of singles and EPs, a few collabs here and there. Yeah. So it's, it's looking like you're on your way for sure. You have like a little bit over 8K monthly listeners on Spotify right now. Yeah. Around there, it drops and it goes up, you know. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your first album, the With You album. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be. So that album, I was making a whole bunch of just random music and stuff. And one day I was like, I want to make something that's kind of more inspired. Something. Mm-hmm. And so I sat down. I was like, all right, I want to make this kind of a relatively long, you know, just chill, nice album. So I was like, I'm going to start off with a couple of these like interludes, some, you know, some some stuff that has some dialogue some more, you know, boom bap stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so I was just making a whole bunch of different type of music. I was still experimenting. I kind of didn't know what I was doing at the time. So I was just, just putting a whole bunch of different type of singles and, you know, music that I made that I thought sounded nice, put them all together in one big album. That's how that came to be. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And so I guess a follow up to that is like, at what point did you think you began to know what you were doing? Towards the middle of last year, that's when I was like, all right, this is kind of the sound that I like. This is kind of how I want to start doing things. At the beginning of this year, I actually made a plan of what I want to release and when I want to release it. All the music I've released so far this year is from the beginning from January up to now, which is November. Mm. That's all been planned out. You know, all the releases, all the, the, the dates, the titles, everything, all of that's been planned out. All the music that I've actually released also, it's old music that I made that I've just been holding on to for a long time. So tell me a little bit about your sample choices because as I was listening through your discography I recognized like an In Love with the Ghost sample on the track I Love You So Much or the intro, a South Park sample off of Heart Hurts. What exactly are you looking for when you go sample digging? I feel like I try to find stuff that kind of like resonates with me. Like the South Park I really love South Park. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. That one episode is like it's, you know, it's an emotional episode mm-hmm. that I really like. But when I do find a sample that I really like. It makes me feel something. Once I hear it, I'm like, oh yeah, this this drum loop uh, would go good with it, you know? Whenever I hear it and if I like it and I get inspired by it, I just, I just use it. My next question is about cover art, actually, because you seem to have a very good sense of, of cover art as like a just a, an aesthetic and stylistic thing like you have the starry night skies of childhood memories and i love you so much and then you also have the kind of spacey pink and dreamy atmospheric cover arts like from with you and the evo 01 ep and then you have the nostalgic vhs style backyard fantasies volume one and those nights and and all these different styles so like i guess my question is like how do you come up with these cover art ideas mostly depending on like how the i, I how i feel the, the song or the album or the ep however it sounds that kind of inspires me to make the cover art a specific way like you said i really love the vhs you know the the glitchy and that old kind of vibe mm-hmm. and I also like you know like the night sky and stuff like that so stuff like that that's how I get very inspired by it mostly the VHS stuff I really love like that old vintage and you know, nostalgic feel and sound mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I get most of my inspiration from. And at the same time, as we're moving further into 2020 and going into 2021, with your release of Childhood Memories in particular, that one sounded a bit different than all previous releases. (laughs) Where are you taking your sound as we go into 2021? Especially with that album, Childhood Memories, that wasn't very heavily lo-fi inspired, but I did try to use some elements from lo-fi because I I really love lo-fi and I love, like I said, that nostalgic feel. Mm -hmm. But with Childhood Memories, that was more about giving a story 
story about me, how I was growing up and all my experiences I had. It progressively, like from like the first track to the last one, it goes by when I was like born, I guess, to like now when I'm a little bit older. Mm -hmm. So it's like in chronological order. So with each song, I was trying to mm -hmm. and capturing a moment in my life, depending on like what age or what experiences I was going through at the time with a specific sound. So like with My Friends Are My Power, Mm -hmm. Like it has the Kingdom Hearts melody that I like. I recreated growing up. I love Kingdom Hearts. I love the Kingdom Hearts music and stuff. So I was heavily inspired, along with the message of like, yeah, I love all my friends. You know, like they helped me so much growing up, and you know, I'll always remember them. So that song was about that. Some other songs down the line, like I hope you're proud of me. I'm sorry, I'm not the man you that you expected me to be. That's more of me, like. You know, being when I'm growing up, you know, that sometimes I, I question myself, like, am I the person that my parents want me to be? Mm -hmm. And depending on, you know, how the mood that that song is more like sad with like the guitar, the guitar melody that I created. So it's more emotional. So that album kind of it fluctuates a lot with the sound selection and the, the melodies and stuff like that. So along with like the the themes and just the aesthetic of all your albums i definitely get the sense that you're making a world and through this world building you're introducing us to aspects of fantasy aspects of nostalgia aspects of your life you know and one of the characters that i've found in your music is charlie you have three songs that reference charlie one's called charlie made me do it one's just called charlie and then the last one's called charlie's postscriptum so i'm just curious who is Charlie? Yeah, man. So that's something that a couple of people have pointed out too. So to me, Charlie is, it's a person in my life, but it's also like kind of, I try to use it as symbolism mm -hmm. for this person who kind of affected me. Their impact on my life really made me like question a lot of things, you know? Mm -hmm. So like with the song, Charlie's Postscriptum, the dialogue sample I used was basically saying how in life, no one's going to help you out except yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really, I really like that dialogue sample that I used and the sound selection I used in that one. And to me, that kind of boils down to how this person, Charlie, affected my life and how they kind of sometimes help me, sometimes, you know, hurt me, you know, depends on, on what I want to make a song about during what moment, you know? I completely follow you. And I feel like that's just part of the journey too, like kind of flopping around um, while at the same time discovering parts of your musical and creative identities. So let's pivot <laughs> a little bit and let's talk about your collab. There aren't too many collabs in your discography. You have Younger Days with Foshi, and then you have Those Nights, which you did with Blackbee, who we interviewed a while back. So I'm just wondering, like, how do you approach collabs, and can we expect more in the future? I, I love working with other people. Blackbee, I love how he does the, those little high-pass filters. I, like, I, I love how he has that little style to him. Mm. And Foshi... I've sent him some beats in, in the past and we worked here and there. I'm always open to working with anyone. You know, I feel like uh, I saw that Blackbeard interview and I love what he said. That it doesn't matter your following count or how many listeners you have. Mm. Everyone, you know, everyone has their own unique style. And I think that's 100% true. You know, me starting off, I don't think that I have the same skills that I do now. So I wouldn't expect anyone to like want to collab with me. But if I find someone who is like small, smaller than me, but like they like their their music is dope, mm. I'm not going to let their, you know, like their clout or whatever affect my decision to want to collab with them. You know, like if your music is dope and you want to work with me, just do it, man. Let's make some dope music, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, And another collab that I really enjoyed was on Blackbee's awaited a head EP. You and him did the Serenity track together, and that one in particular I really enjoyed. Are there any like crazy stories or crazier stories behind making any album or any song in particular? Being 100% honest, when, when I make music, I think it's like best music ever, but being realistic, you know, you, you gotta admit, you know, not all the music that you make is, is it, like people are gonna enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So when I was making Childhood Memories, I, I basically cut that entire track list in half. And I, I was like, I'm going to make this album. It's going to be short. But I'm going to make sure that each song is perfect. So I would sit down every single day working on it, like three, four hours on each song. And it was to the point where I was like, I was getting tired of listening in so much. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, I have to, I have to, I have to finish it. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to make it gotta be perfect. Yeah, for sure. So what exactly is that process like? Like, how do you know when you're going to cut a song? I think it's mostly when I listen to it over and over and it just, it doesn't vibe with me. And there's times when I make music, I'm like, oh, it's amazing. You know, it's the vibe, you know, I'm chilling to it, I'm vibing to it. But if a song doesn't make me do that, and I'm like, if I don't vibe with it and I made it, you know, what's, what's to say that some random person is going to like it, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. Is there anything specific you had plan for the future like maybe a backyard fantasies volume two or something like that 
Oh yeah, of course, man. Um, actually, I made that entire album uh, when I went on, on a trip to New York last year. Mm-hmm. So I made those those songs over there, and I'm uh, in the future. I'm planning on definitely going again. The album cover of Backyard Fantasies is a city called Blumenberg. It's, it was beautiful, and that's the whole entire inspiration of of that album. The album cover is a picture of someone's actual backyard. Their backyard is literally like they have the forest outside their backyard. I'm like, wow, it's amazing. So I want to plan to go over there again. You know, get some more inspiration and make volume two. Is geography a super important major factor in what you create? Or do you draw inspiration from other places usually? Most of my inspiration comes from from the media I like. You know, like I, I love anime. I love watching anime. So there's a lot of anime samples and my music and stuff like that. When I go out to like different city or, or like to a lake or whatever, seeing all that beautiful nature definitely does inspire me to create more. It allows me to free my mind of everything and just like focus on my music Mm -hmm. and i'm also curious just because i feel like it's a part of everyone's process like when you do find yourself kind of burning out how do you work your way around that like what do you do to get over it i force myself to like sit down every single day and try to make something you know just anything like a loop you know like a melody just something Mm -hmm. to like keep me on that grind you know like just if one day you know i'm just completely not feeling it i don't want to do anything what I do is I go back into my um, my music folder mm-hmm. with all my past projects and stuff, and I I go in there and I like I listen to stuff that I really like, and I, I would I would sample myself or I would take that you know a certain melody or stuff like that. But that's what I try to do to like keep me motivated to keep on making more and more. But there are definitely times where I'm just like I I don't know what to do, I don't know what to make, you know, I have no inspiration stuff like that. Mm. And if I get to that point, that's when I'm like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little break, go watch some YouTube, go watch some Netflix, you know, whatever, and then come back. And I feel like I feel like that definitely does help me kind of get back into that creative mind when I watch something or when I go out for a walk or whatever. It allows me to to get more ideas flowing, you know. Yeah, for sure. Who's your dream collab? There's an artist. He's not very, he's, he's not lo-fi, but you know, I, I love his music. Mm. His name is Shinigami. His music also inspired me heavily a lot. So he makes more like rap, you know, like underground rap type music. He made an album called Luna, which is more chill, you know, more lo-fi. And that album was the one that kind of like pushed me towards making more music more often. Because mm. I was watching his interview and he was like, oh yeah, I was on that grind, making music every single day. He inspired me to make music more and more. So I feel like he would be my, my number one collab ever. I'm always open to doing collabs with anyone. Uh, I love making music and I love working with other people. When you make music with other people, you're open up to more ideas and more inspiration. You feel me? Yeah, for sure. And we definitely get a sense of that uh, in the collabs that you have worked on and things like that. What advice do you have to people wanting to get into the space of lo-fi music production or just in general? What advice do you have to people who want to get into music? I would say to just just do it. Uh, in my case, there was people who were like, oh, like your music's trash, you know, like it's, it's trash or whatever. So I was like, I don't care. I like making it. I like it. If you find yourself in that situation, I said, just ignore, ignore them. No, keep pushing forward. Uh, never give up. If you get stuck on something or just don't feel motivated, just don't give up. Keep, keep working towards it. You're going to be happy you did. When you make a song that you really like, you're going to listen to it and you're going to be like, damn, I really made that, you know? Mm. So it's, if you want to make music, Go for it. You can't lose anything by making music, you know? When you make music, you're expressing yourself and you know you're letting your ideas flow. And it's, it's amazing. This has been the Kibun interview on the So Who's Up Next podcast. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out Kibun on Spotify and other major streaming platforms. Follow our show wherever you're listening from and be sure to stick around because I got a lot of great talks headed your way very, very soon. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>